And we are in a sermon series for three months on the topic of spiritual gifts. And every Sunday we are choosing one spiritual gift and just doing a deep dive to see what is the spiritual gift, do you have it, and how can you use it? So, I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being our Father, for being our friend. God, we thank you that you are Holy Spirit and you're moving in our lives. God, we pray during this time you'd take away distractions and that you'd just be our one thing right now, that we'd focus on you, God, and your word. God, we thank you for the gifts of the Spirit that you give every Christian. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd somehow speak through me. Amen. All right, Chaminade University in Kaimuki over on Wailea Avenue. You guys heard of it, Chaminade? It's a private Catholic college of about 2,000 students. And on December 23rd, 1982, their NAIA level men's basketball team made history. They played the number one ranked NCAA Division I University of Virginia Cavaliers. So University of Virginia, they were playing a couple of games in Tokyo, Japan, and they thought, oh, I might as well just stop by Honolulu, get some sun, get some rays, and then just play this little small college just for kicks, you know? So back in 1982, Virginia stopped by Chaminade University to play this small NAIA school. Virginia's star player was Ralph Sampson. He was the two-time player of the year and a future NBA Hall of Famer. The game was played uh, at the Blaisdell Center on Ward Avenue. And in the first half of the game, Chaminade like, kept it close, they kept it close, and at halftime they actually had the game tied at 43 to 43. But as the second half of the game went on, University of Virginia, as expected, pulled away, they were up by nine. But then somehow Chaminade stormed back, tied the game, and went ahead on a big, perfect alley-oop dunk pass, and then Chaminade had all the momentum. And the game stayed close until the very end when Virginia was called for a double dribble violation with 10 seconds left, which enabled Chaminade to shoot free throws and secure the win. The buzzer went off and the crowd went wild. The players went wild. It was a crazy celebration. The star player for Chaminade sat on the basketball rim at the Blaisdell Center. There's just pictures of him sitting on the rim. He cut down the net. They took down the number one team in NCAA Division I as this small little Chaminade school. Virginia's coach said, this is the biggest upset in history. ESPN refused to air the story because they did not believe it was real until like later on that day. The next morning, the Honolulu Star Advertiser front page headline was, the miracle on Ward Avenue. The miracle on Ward Avenue. And because of this game, what came of it is the Maui Invitational Tournament that happens every year on Maui, thanks to this victory by Chaminade over number one Virginia. Miracles can happen. If you believe it or not, miracles can happen and miracles do happen. And we love it when miracles happen in sports. And also in your life, miracles can happen and miracles are happening right now if you realize it or not. And today's topic, today's spiritual gift we're focusing on is the spiritual gift of miracles. Miracles. We're going to answer two big questions on this topic of miracles so you can know what miracles are and how you can share miracles with others. Our first big question of two on this topic is how did miracles work in Bible times? How did miracles work in Bible times? So in the final episode of the TV show, The Office, Andy Bernard says, I wish there was a way to know that you were in the good old days before you actually left them. I wish there was a way to know you were in the good old days before you actually left, left them. Anyone feel like that before? And I think this is often how we view miracles. Thinking, I wish God did as many miracles today as he used to do back then. You ever have that thought before? I have. Like, I wish God would do as many miracles today in 2023 as he did back in the Bible. You know, happen all the time miracles. But I think, according to the Bible, 
people during Bible times were actually saying the exact same thing that we are today. I wish God was doing as many miracles today as he was back then. That's what it says in Psalm 77, 11. It says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will remember your miracles of long ago. A donkey speaking in a human voice to Balaam. Jericho's walls came tumbling down. Manna miraculously falling from heaven. Moses parting the Red Sea. The psalmist in Psalm 77 was wishing for the good old days, just like we may. Pastor John Piper says, there were fewer miracles in the Bible than you probably think and more miracles today than you probably know. There were more miracles today than you probably know, know and less miracles back then in Bible times than you think. About 83 miracles happened in the Old Testament, 83. Over a couple thousand years in different places through different people. So that's 83 miracles over thousands of years. Miracles were not actually that normal in the Bible time. They were not an everyday occurrence. We just have them all recorded in order in the Bible. In the New Testament, during Jesus' three-year ministry, he performed about 37 miracles that are recorded. He turned water into wine. He healed tons of people that needed sight. They were mute. They were lame. Their ears cut off. He walked on water. He cast out demons. He calmed storms. He fed 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fish. He raised his buddy Lazarus from the dead. And John 20:30 says, that Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. So he did way more than 37. He did choke miracles. And this is different. Jesus is different. He is God. So why did Jesus perform so many miracles? John 20 continues by saying, but these miracles are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Greek words translated to miracle originally means works, wonders, powers, and signs. So Jesus performed these wonderful, powerful signs to prove to everyone that he is the Messiah, the promised Savior they had been waiting for, so that people may believe in his name. He's like, it's me, I'm him. He's that guy. And Jesus also performed so many miracles to show that his kingdom has broken through. He was bringing heaven down to earth. He wasn't disrupting the natural order. order. He was restoring the natural order. He was healing. He was making things new and bringing hearts to peace with God, the way things were supposed to be in the beginning. Jesus' miracle ministry was unique because he is God. And that's why he did so many miracles. And all of these miracles of Jesus are written in the Bible so that we may believe that he is God, that he is the Savior. And there is enough evidence and life-changing power in the word of God to change our lives, to change someone's life and bring them to saving faith in Jesus. That's why we have the Bible, so people can be saved. So if Jesus' miracles are written so we may believe, why aren't as many miracles happening today. So if someone experiences a miracle, is that enough to make someone believe in Jesus as their savior from sin? Experiencing a miracle, is that enough? It can be, but in the Bible, the majority of people that saw Jesus perform miracles didn't believe in him because they already had their preconceived notions of who they thought he was. When Jesus healed 10 lepers, only one came back to thank him. When Jesus healed a man that was blind from birth, the Pharisees were more concerned that he was breaking the Sabbath and only made their hearts harder towards the miracles and his name. And if someone does believe in Jesus based on a miracle, that is not enough for them to believe in Jesus because trusting in Jesus as your savior from sin 
is more than just remembering a miracle that he did. It's surrendering your life to the greatest miracle he did, dying and rising again for your sins. Salvation through his death and resurrection on the cross for you. It's not just remembering something he did for you. Oh, he's so good. I mean, that's good. But people are saved through believing in the greatest miracle of all time, Jesus' death and resurrection for you. So when you pray for a miracle or a sign to happen to someone so they may believe, God can do that. But also remember that we have an entire book full of miracles in the Bible that can also bring people to saving faith that you have access to at any time. So we see in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that miracles weren't as normal of an everyday occurrence that we may think. And when Jesus came into the picture, his ministry was unique because he is God. And miracles happened in Bible times to verify Jesus, to give him that blue check mark that he is God, that he's bringing heaven down to earth, and for the purpose of leading people to salvation in his name through the greatest miracle of all time, his resurrection. That's why miracles happen today as well. And that brings us to our second point of two. The second big question we're answering on this topic of miracles is, can you perform miracles? Can you perform miracles today? So, could one of us stand up and just part the Pacific Ocean? Is that possible? Yes. Is that possible? Okay. Is it possible, is God capable of raining down Leonard's malasadas from the sky? Oh, don't put that past him. I believe he could do it. Is he not big enough to do it? How big is your God? Could he do that? Or like, no, he, he couldn't do that. What do you think? Are we able to place hands on people in prayer and then they'll be healed? Yes. Are we able to cast out demons to some of the mentally ill people that we see? Yes. In Matthew 17, a man has a son who is demon-possessed, and he brings the boy to Jesus' disciples to heal him, and they couldn't do it. Then the boy is brought to Jesus, and Jesus just casts out the demon. And the disciples asked him, hey, how come we could not do it? Then Jesus answered, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. We have the power to move mountains if we have faith that God can do it, that it's God's power working through us. Jesus says so. Where does that power come from? God, the Holy Spirit. This power is not our own. After Jesus rose from the dead, and he was about to go up to heaven. He had one last gathering with his guys, and he said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You've probably heard that verse before. But as it continues in verses 11 through 14, Jesus keeps talking, and he says, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He's claiming to be God. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Jesus is saying that his miracles are enough evidence in itself to believe that he is God, that he is the Messiah. He continues in verse 12, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So Jesus says that everyone who comes to the Father through him will do the same works or miracles that he did, and even greater things than he did, for the purpose of glorifying God. And we can ask anything in his name according to his will, and he will do it. So how is this possible? How are we able to do the same works that Jesus did? It's because it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit Jesus has, we have, if you are a Christian. Jesus continues talking in verses 15 through 17 of John 14. 
He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Miracles are made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit, God living in us and through us. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Holy Spirit power. Do you believe it? Is it real? For the purpose of glorifying God, loving him, loving others, and making disciples to the ends of the earth. So, when Jesus says that we will do even greater works than he did, it does not mean that we will be greater than God. No, that's not what he's saying. If we are greater than God, how great is our God? Not very great. What he is saying is that we will do the same miracles as Jesus because we have the same Holy Spirit. And it will be greater because there's so many of us. (laughs) There's so many of us going to the ends of the earth maxing it out to share the gospel. It will be greater because Jesus has now died and risen again, and we have the resurrection power available to us. In Mark 16, there's a third account of the Great Commission when Jesus went up to heaven. And in Mark 16, 17 and 18, Jesus says, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. No snakes in Hawaii, it's good. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. So whether you have done these things or not, Jesus says it is possible through him, through the Holy Spirit. Some Christians believe that the ability to perform miracles is no longer happening, that it was just reserved for the 12 disciples. After the Bible was finished being written and miracles are contained only to back in the good old days, some people believe that. My personal viewpoint is who am I to say that God cannot do that? Who am I to limit God and say that miracles cannot happen? He is the way maker the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and I believe God can literally do anything for his purposes. Now we see only dimly, but then we will see completely when we see him face to face in heaven. We'll see how incredibly awesome he is and the incredible power of God that we've had access to all along. We'll see it when Jesus comes back. We'll realize he's been with us all along and that he has been working in our lives even when we don't see it or feel it. Do you give credit? Do you realize everything God is doing in your life every single day? Do you realize how pretty much everything is a miracle? Do you see the miracles happening in your everyday life? Miracles are things that cannot be explained in any other way but that God did it. This is actually something that I pray for myself pretty much every day. I pray for God to do things that only he can do. I pray for God to do things that are just unexplainable any other way but through him. I pray for God to do miracles every day. Uh, Like, for example, there are so many stories of what God can do. Just talk to each other. There's so many stories of what God can do. A friend of mine who's a pastor, he told me a story of how he was on a missions trip overseas, and he was preaching a sermon in English, and there were many people of different cultures and languages in the crowd, and they had one translator for one language being translated of the sermon. But when the sermon finished, there's a group of people that came up to my friend, and they said, oh, you speak our native tongue just perfectly. Great sermon. And then my friend was like, what are you talking about? I was speaking English. He's like, No, you weren't. (laughs) You were speaking our language. (laughs) Like, how else is that explained? That is something that only God can do. That is a miracle. He was talking English. He was speaking English like I am right now, but they were hearing 
their own language directly from his mouth. No translator involved. It's a crazy story, but God can do so much more than we think he can do. Another example is if you just Google Muslims being saved. Muslims all the time are having visions and dreams about Jesus Christ. Not even opening a Bible, not even being in any contact with Christians or missionaries. A study by Mission Frontiers showed that of a survey of 600 Muslims who were converted as a Muslim and then to Christianity, of 600 of them, 25% came to saving faith in Jesus through visions and dreams. Who says God cannot reach someone on a stranded island? God can reach the Muslims through vision, visions and dreams. What do you believe that he can or cannot do? Do you think the things, this the normal things in your everyday life are coincidences? Or do you realize that the Holy Spirit is working for you and in you all the time for his purposes? I don't know how many times throughout the last seven years having multiple jobs where I've just been flat broke, overdrafting my bank account on the regular, and then a check comes in for the exact amount that I need to pay rent. That has happened multiple times for me. I don't know about if you guys have stories of financial gifts that come in at just the right time and you need it. This happens all the time for me. Or how many times I'm surfing Publix or Diamond Head at just overhead swells and I'm just charging and then I'm just taking a wave and I, I know there's a reef there, so I'm just falling crashing over the wall, falling down, just bracing for the reef, and I just never hit it. I just never hit it. I'm just untouched. Like, is that a coincidence? Like, I th can attribute that to God. I think it's a miracle, God protecting me. Or as Bethany shared, we are getting married on July 15th, and we just sat down in April for the second time to look at apartments online together. Just, okay, let's do this. We, uh, open up Zillow.com, the first house we click on is just the dream, the dream cottage that we want. So we look and there were four people that contacted the house. It was posted two hours ago. And I noticed it's the same rental company that I currently have. So I just like texted my property manager, hey, I like this place. He called me the next day and offered us to move in. We didn't even have to apply or get a background check or a credit check. He's like, it's yours. And we're like, Sweet. <laughs> and within those two days the house was listed, there was over 100 inquiries to get that apartment. We were literally one in a hundred. I mean, oh, it's coincidence. No, I think that's a miracle. We had so much, we didn't stress at all about finding a house. One in a hundred, God provides. I attribute that to God being a miracle worker. Or when your friend, or your, your friend has a life-threatening accident or injury. Levi is alive. Praise God. <laughs> After his motorcycle accident, praise God for the people that saved him. Or when you're running late to the gathering and then you just slide into that perfect parking spot right there, <laughs> praise God. Or when a friendship is restored, when you find favor with your boss at work when your health improves, when you are protected from a dangerous situation? What do you attribute these things to? Coincidences or God working miracles in the normal everyday things in your life? When you happen to be in the right place at the right time, it's not a coincidence. It's a God thing. It's a miracle. These are all miracles. Or throwing it back to uh, 2018, five years ago, Hurricane Lane. Anybody living here five years ago? Hurricane Lane. A hurricane we actually all took seriously. It was world news that this hurricane was going to just devastate Hawaii. The entire world was talking about it. We all had work off. We all had work off, school off, for two to three days because the storm slowed down. So we're all just chilling in our houses for two to three days. We're all sitting in our homes waiting for the storm. Costco was going crazy. The Weather Channel said that this hurricane lane in 2018 was going to be worse than Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina is the deadliest, costliest hurricane in American history. They said Hurricane Lane was going to be worse. McDonald's, ABC stores in Kalakaua closed for a day, sandbags up to the top. 
Cops are driving down the Alawai, sitting on their windows with megaphones saying, stay inside, get inside. So what me and my roommate Petey do, and friends, we take 12 inflatable swans and go to walls, and we jump off, <laughs> waiting for the storm. And you can literally, like the view we see right now, the entire sky was just a black, straight down, huge cloud. We could see Hurricane Lane approaching. It was like impending doom. And then literally at like the very last moment, the hurricane just takes a stark turn, and nothing happened. It was so anticlimactic. Hurricane Lane became Hurricane Lame. And we can like attribute this stuff to nature. The wind shear protected our island yet again. But don't you think that God can work supernaturally through the natural? We see things, but the one protecting God himself, protecting Oahu himself, God. God was protecting us from Hurricane Lane. The Holy Spirit is working all around us. And if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior from sin, he is inside of you. He is working in you and for you. As John Piper says, there were fewer miracles in the Bible than you probably think and more miracles today than you probably know. If all 8 billion people living on earth right now and all the people who have lived the last 2,000 years, if we all wrote our own book and made a blog about all the miracles that happen in our everyday lives, I think that book would be huge, and there'd be so many stories and supernatural, unexplainable things that only God can do. I think the book would be very big, of God's miracles, if we wrote them down. So according to the Bible verses that we just read, Christians have the Holy Spirit power to move mountains, do the same works as Jesus, to be witnesses to the ends of the earth, to cast out demons, to handle snakes with safety, to drink anything poisonous and won't hurt them, place hands on people and heal them, ask anything in Jesus' name through his will, and it'll be granted to us, and that nothing is impossible with God. So today, can you perform miracles? Yes, you can. A part of this topic, disclaimer, is that there is also the spiritual gift of miracles. Some people will be especially gifted in this area. Not everyone has the spiritual gift of miracles because we all have different spiritual gifts and we're all important parts of the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11 says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that same one spirit, to another miraculous powers, right there, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Miraculous powers are one of the spiritual gifts given by God as he determines. We do not choose our spiritual gifts like a vending machine, like B1, B2, Snickers. That's not how it works. We all have different spiritual gifts, and we are all different important parts of the body of Christ. As it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 30, it says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? The answer to this rhetorical question is no. We're all different on purpose. And some of us will be especially gifted in the spiritual gift of miracles. If you desire this gift, the Bible says that we can pray to receive a gift. But even if we want or desire a gift so badly, still God will grant our prayers with yes or no or not yet. And he is the one who determines which gifts that we receive. And if you do have this gift, remember that God gets all the glory. It's all through him and for him. It's all because of God living inside you, not our own strength. 
So as a Christian, for all of us who like, may not have this special gifting, how does God work miracles in you and through you? We can position ourselves to be used by God by fully surrendering ourselves to him, by letting the Holy Spirit move and work through you, choosing to be obedient to his commands, walking, living in the Spirit, stepping out and letting the miracle worker work through you, And we are children of God, and Jesus says we have the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead living inside of you. We can place our hands on people knowing that he'll provide for what they need. We can cast out demons in Jesus' name. Jesus says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will. Nothing will be impossible for you because nothing is impossible for God. Jeremiah 30 to 27 I really love this verse. It says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for me? Like, what's important to you? Being able to comprehend everything or trusting that nothing is impossible with God? Is anything too hard for God? Miracles are still happening today through the power of the Holy Spirit outside of you and inside of you. And the purpose of these miracles today are to verify Jesus as God, to bring heaven down to earth, and to save as many people as we can through Jesus' name. Some people will have the special gifting of miracles, but for all of us, your life is a miracle. And God is using you to change people's life, to bring people to salvation, even when you don't realize it or not. God's grace for us is a miracle. We don't deserve anything because of our sin, but God has gifted and blesses us with the Holy Spirit, which gives us life to the fullest here and now and a promise of heaven forever, eternal life, living with Jesus and each other. Our life is a miracle, and the greatest miracle of all time, Jesus' death and resurrection, is offered and given to you, and you can receive it if you want to or not. And when we love others, we are bringing miracles into other people's lives. So in conclusion, to wrap it up, miracles can happen in your life, and they are already happening right now. Do you see them? Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 says, I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. These verses are a prayer for us to see God right, to be able to comprehend his greatness and his power and that we have access to him. If you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And Jesus Christ raising from the dead is the greatest miracle that this world has ever seen. The greatest upset, the greatest comeback of all time. The miracle of Jesus' resurrection for you. And that miracle lives on today through you. We bring miracles into other people's life because of the miracle that Jesus did for us, our salvation. We do not need to go back to the good old days because we are living in the good old days right now. Jesus is with us. So because of that, let's bring heaven down to earth. Let's share this miracle of Jesus' death and rising again with everyone that we know. Jesus changes lives, and if you are a Christian, he has changed your life. So let's share this with everybody that we know because this is the greatest miracle, and God wants to work in their life and change their heart. Jesus dying on the cross for your sins because he loves you. Jesus rising again because he can. He has that power. He did it because he loves you. And this is given to you through God's grace as a free gift. All you have to do is accept it. If you have this free gift of forgiveness for your sins, It's our responsibility to share this with everybody to the ends of the earth. That is why we have this power. God is glorified so much when you tell other people about him. 
We want to bring as many people to heaven with us as we can. Let's not reserve it just for us here. We're not a club. Let's invite everyone every day of the week that people know you're a Christian and you talk about it all the time. There's more miracles happening today than you know. So let's share Jesus with everyone because the miracle of his death and resurrection lives through you because he is the miracle worker and he can save their soul. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and rising again. God, we ask that every person here today would know that you love them and you sacrificed your life for them. And God, we pray that people would be open to receiving you as their Savior. And we pray that people would receive you as their Savior right now. God, for all of us that know you, we ask for courage, bravery, trust to be able to share this message, this good news with everyone every day of the week. Because God, you are the miracle worker. You changed our lives, and we know you can change the lives of people in our lives. Jesus, we want to bring as many people to heaven with us as we can. You are the one that saves Jesus. We trust you, and we just live this life for you. Amen.